So I don't know if you find this, Gary, um, in working with people and just doing this sort of dialogue with people, which mm. is all I really mean by mm. working with people, is that there, it, that people seem to learn and unfold in, in clusters, right? I find that when one person is really lighting up on something and mm. getting something that somebody else, maybe across the planet, is also unfolding. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes that happens also in terms of this phenomenon of getting stuck. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I thought we might talk a little bit about what we've seen in terms of uh, people m making enormous progress and then getting stuck mm -hmm. and what some tactics are for noticing that they were never stuck. Yeah. yeah I think it's, a, it's for, uh, quite common. I don't say everybody, but quite, quite common that people get some initial openings or something. They begin to understand something, and they begin to making real quick progress. And then suddenly, you talk to them, and it just stopped. They've stopped sitting. They've stopped practicing. They stopped inquiring. They stopped doing anything, and they decided that you know, um, here's the reason I'm stopped here. And what the reason really is is they're afraid of going any further. They've, I mean, some part of their Consciousness, ego, eye construct has seen that this is really a kind of a dangerous thing for its full employment, and so it says, oh, "Well, hold, let's, let's let's look at this a little bit. Let's calm down here, slow down, take some time, look around, and you know, just compare. Oh my goodness, look at all this! This I get this intellectual problem, this intellectual problem, so forth. A bunch of intellectual problems and questions and constructs, and you can watch when people start to branch intellectually." Uh, it's really the ego coming in and trying to say, "Hey, look, let's let's call this thing off. Let's call off the search, because I've had enough of this already. Thank you very much." And all these questions I've got about this thing, I see that often. Do you do? Yeah, I do too. And then, uh, you know, so you're quite right. So often, a lot of times, that it takes place on this cognitive level, mm -hmm. where there's yeah. all these theoretical reasons why this couldn't possibly work. Mm -hmm. um, and there's all of these uh, aspects of one's life that one actually treasures. Like, you know, I, en I enjoy my suffering. You know, suffering is very important. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to interact with uh, my spouse if I didn't, under you know, in didn't enjoy my suffering. Right. Um, that's authentic. That's real. I want to live a real life, for yeah. example. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, my response is usually to just sort of be with that and say, well, yeah, okay. You know, I can see the virtues of that, but, um, the pattern is so predictable and mm -hmm. repetitious that it must be part of the phenomenon of, you know, the narrative mind getting the message and saying, Hey, you know, sales are down on, uh, you know, <laughs> on, on stories about the eye. Uh, you know, we need to get this division operating again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so people, you know, might be able to feel their way out of that, right? Mm -hmm. They might recognize that, you know, if they've seen this video and say, oh, you know, I seem to be trying to throw a cognitive net over this mm -hmm. and it can't be figured out by the mind. No, absolutely not. And, and, and two of the three things you said are just are common themes right now in the new Advaitin community, which to me is the faux Advaitin community, things like, I love my suffering. I want to keep my suffering. I, I need my suffering so I can feel human. And people told me, you're not human. So, well, I, I kind of think I'm human. I don't know how I'm going to be like you are, but I don't need my suffering. Matter of fact, I didn't really care for my suffering when I had it around. I didn't feel I needed to have more of it. And so I thought it should be a good thing if I could get rid of it. And yet people say that. And they also you know, make several other lines you said. But it, this, this cognitive dissonance that comes in, you know, the ego will throw up any possible thing it can. And there are enough people bumping up against this now that there are a lot of stories floating around about, here's, oh, here's a big problem with this. These people aren't human, or they can't, they can't relate to other folks, or they can't live in the world, they can't function in the world, which is just it's not true. Yeah. It's just not correct. And you don't need your suffering. Uh, it, it doesn't appear to be the case. I mean, you know, frankly, if somebody told me I wasn't, human, I would take that as high praise. I mean, <laughs> look at the record. <laughs> Just like, uh, log on. Yeah. I, 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 you know, if, if, if what it means to be human is to make the same mistakes over and over again, 
for thousands of years and to manifest those mistakes on, into the ecosystem and into material reality and into other human beings, right. then, you know, it's time to evolve people. And, um, I, you know, but that, that kind of direct approach in my, in my experience rarely works. I mean, what, what, what concerns me or what I have to be with is that when the mind tries to grasp what has already occurred when there's been some opening, it can be, in my experience, extremely volatile mm -hmm. because it's a kind of wheel spinning where you're saying, well, it's this. And then very quickly, the mind sees that that can't do it. And then it says, well, it's not because I need my suffering. It's because, uh, I need to uh, experience what it's like to both have suffering and not have suffering at the same time. So I need to be a bodhisattva, right? You know, right. just, you know, endless uh, possibilities come out of that, you know, hundred trillion right. neuronal connection. And it's almost as if the further along one gets, the more quickly the mind exhausts the possibility that that's actually going to work mm -hmm. because you've had this experience, which is, mm -hmm ineffable, which we're all having right, right now. Right. And so uh, the reason I want to share this is just out of, you know, compassion. I feel it with the people that I work with sometimes is that they get all strung out trying to figure this stuff out. And it just right. uh, relax, float downstream, feel right. what it feels like to be in that silence and just be good with the fact that it's not a crossword puzzle that you can figure out. <laughs> well, and, and the feeling, you mentioned feeling. Uh, I think that's one thing people have to really understand. This is a very tactile, yeah. sensory journey. Yeah. And uh, your, your default position should be, okay, how do I feel when I'm not in blah, blah, when I'm not suffering, when I'm not in confusion and anxiety? How does it feel? And if they can get that feeling... No, I'm back in confusion, and go back and forth enough times. The brain looks at that and says, "You know, this is this is way cool. This is not cool anymore." And so that that can be your antidote mm -hmm. for all of this intellectual, never-ending philosophizing, analyzing, categorizing. You can go on the web and get ten zillion different sources for this stuff. You're your own way out of this thing. This really is a DIY. You can feel your way through this thing. Just because I, I did, just feel what feels best for you. This is all about your being really happy in a different way than you were ever happy before. Just feel what it feels like when you have that space, and just go there, and then see all the contrasts you see. Your mind will never be able to touch this space, and the problem the ego has, it can see that it can't get to that space, and it's frustrated. It doesn't know what to do, so it begins trying to analyze the whole thing. Just trust that. Yes, yeah, so what calls it emptiness or yeah, the void. The uh, void or some, you know, essential void or the dark night of the soul or blah, 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 whatever. It's just the mind running around trying to save its job. Right. You know, it's like words running around trying to describe the taste of orange or the smell yeah. of a rose. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with language or anything wrong with the mind. Right. It's just that it's a mistake to expect that kind of uh, uh, capacity out of either of them. Um, so this, I, I think the two most important things that you just said are, you know, being with feeling that feeling really is the way you're going to mm -hmm. find your way out of there. And if when one is experiencing that volatility and the mind grasping for any narrative or explanation or theory or insight that is going to make sense of what is that you can get behind that by just feeling mm -hmm. Whence comes that kind of scatterbrained uh, mm -hmm. attempt to make sense of it? And when you get there, it doesn't matter if it's scatterbrained. You just feel, uh, you know, the silence out of which even that volatility is coming. And the other thing I think that can't be said often enough is that it's DIY. Mm -hmm. You know, it has to come from inside. It's, you know, you have to become a lamp unto yourself. Yes, you can have spiritual friends. There's even a kind of global sangha of sorts that's emerging. But the sangha emerges on the basis of, a, basis of us all knowing that we have to, each of us, feel our way to the truth in, you know, in this pathless land. We can't uh, 
take what anybody else says as really a way to orient our journey, except as a way of debugging something mm -hmm. that we feel ourselves mm -hmm. is a problem. Yeah. You know, the DIY thing, the big pushback I get on DIY is, well, how do you know you aren't fooling yourself? Richard Feynman's quote of, you know, the first principle is, well, you must not fool yourself, and you're the easiest person to fool. And so I say, well, how do you counter that? I said, well, just, it's a very simple thing. And what's so one I used all the way along, I said, okay, am I done thinking yet? And it, no, okay, then you aren't done yet. And you just keep looking back for self-referential thoughts. If you have these problematic thoughts, you're not done yet. And even the, the, the mega check is, are you still suffering? If you're still suffering, and if you still have a lot of self-referential thoughts, there's more work you can do. That's your DIY check back. I had two Zen masters I could go to at the end, pass, fail, but I, they were of no no use to me, no value to me in the process because they had not done this process. But that's your DIY check back. You know, do you have self-referential thought and are you still suffering? You know if you're suffering better than anybody else in the world will ever know. If you're suffering, you can get rid of that, really. Well, that, that but that's what's beautiful is that, you know, Feynman, the physicist, yeah probably gave too much credence to the idea that you can BS yourself mm. because uh, there's just, a, I mean, he was an incredible yeah. being, right. but there's a little bit less respect say in post-World War II physics for the internal world mm. than there is for the external world. Right. Whereas the example you just gave shows that it's actually not possible to BS yourself if you will turn your awareness back and look from whence any thoughts are coming exactly and observe your thoughts right. that can't be faked it's yeah. like are there fish in the aquarium or not <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if you look and back at, at the and there are fish at, there? and there's fish in there well you know get out your fishing rod get out your fishing rod or you know just dissolve them dissolve be them. with them and yeah. watch them disappear yeah. Yeah. um and, and that to me that's the real strength is that you know full well whether or not you're BSing yourself. That's right. And, and uh, what's beautiful about that, then after a while, it just becomes automatic. It's like, oh, there was a fish. That's Hello, right. fish. That's right. Yeah. You know, welcome. And well, and, and the key is not to get caught up in the fish. Right. I mean, the thing is, is to recognize the fish are there. Yeah. Fish aren't evil. No. But you need to say, okay, how can I get rid of these fish? And it goes, go back to the subject. Who mm -hmm. is seeing the fish? Forget about the fish. Forget about, go back to who is, turn back inside. Mm -hmm. Look who it is that's seeing the fish and begin saying, is this, when is this here? When is she here? What does she think? Where does she live? What? Just begin to understand what it is that's seeing the fish. Whence comes the aquarium? Whence comes the fish? Whence comes the aquarium? And if you do that, then you can keep running this check back. Right. And that's why, you know, Ramakrishna, who is from that Advaita tradition, right. would always say, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Because there's no error in constantly looking back at, at one's thoughts. There's no problem with observing thoughts and there not being any there. That's right. There's no downside to it. No, and it's a very sweet place. It's the sweetest. And I've not, ever found. not for what one. Maybe the last quick point. Another trap is getting a badge. <laughs> I mean, if you get a badge, you get your green belt or your yellow belt or your black Where's belt, or, and you you become trapped in being that name, that title. You're enlightened, or you're some fancy title. Epaulet. Epaulet. Yeah. Yeah, nice hat. <laughs> beautiful hats. Uh, that's that's the worst thing that can happen to you. Because you get stuck there. And you know, you know, in your heart of hearts, when you look back inside, there are fish in the aquarium. You know there are fish in the aquarium. You may have fooled everybody else, but you know there's still fish in the aquarium. And so you're your own only check, possible check back on Right, and you're so you're so busy staring at the epaulette or so the you back. You can't see the fish. That you forget to look back and then <laughs> the <right>. fish <laughs> fish are all over the place. Fish are schooling, you know, pretty much soon it's a feeding <laughs> frenzy. Exactly. At, Piranhas. And <laughs> Thank you.